Hi guys, for the release of The Book of Dust by Philip Pullman, Penguin contacted me to see if I would like to talk to you about reading The Book of Dust before you read the Northern Lights original trilogy because I've never read the original books, I'm a complete newbie when it comes to Philip Pullman's books and I read The Book of Dust. So Penguin have sponsored this video very kindly and today I'm going to talk to you about whether you can read The Book of Dust before you read the His Dark Materials trilogy. So the main reason that I never read the original trilogy, which starts with Northern Lights, then it is The Subtle Knife and then The Amber Spyglass, is that when it was released I was minus four years old. Yes, I was not even born. So whilst everyone else was like, yes, this book is amazing, it's a staple part of my childhood, I'm like, uh, I missed out on that. It's just like I missed out on Harry Potter. I also missed out on reading these. So I've never really been brought up into it. A lot of people read them when they were very younger and it became the book that got them into reading. And I missed that whole stage of it. So I never really had a reason to play catch up on it. So reading the Book of Dust was a bit of an experience. And I really wanted to talk to you about that because there are gonna be lots of you in the same position as me. Maybe you weren't born when the original books were released or maybe you just have never read them. Let's just talk about whether you can read the Book of Dust first. So for a bit of background without any spoilers, Philip Pullman describes the Book of Dust not as a sequel or a prequel but an equal. So it's just a different story told in the same universe that is joined. So it comes before but I think that the next book after La Belle Sauvage is going to be set after the events of the original trilogy so it falls somewhere before and somewhere after which I think is a really interesting way of telling the story. The world that the books are set in is quite similar to our own except that each person has demons that walk around with them and are always with them and as you read the Book of Dust and as I was reading it for the first time with no prior knowledge that was a bit confusing because you have the main character in this Malcolm and then you have this creature and I was a bit confused at first but it's very easy to pick up on. You really get a sense of who the characters are from their demons which are like manifestations of their soul and for the children in this world their demons change shape but they then become fixed as they get older which I thought was a really interesting thing and is a really nice metaphor for children changing as they grow up and do we actually reach a point where we finish growing up and that's just who we are for the rest of our lives. I'm quite interested in that. And the questions raised about that from the book. I really liked the Book of Dust. I thought it was interesting, but I must say that I don't really get all the hype because I never grew up with the Northern Lights, the Golden Compass phenomenon. I just never ever ever knew anything about it. So I missed all of that and so I don't really get that specific fascination that everybody else seems to have with it. And I think it's actually really nice to talk about that because as much as I loved The Book of Dust, as much as I could really appreciate the storytelling and really appreciate Philip Pullman's writing, I missed out on a whole section of the history behind the books and a whole section of people going to midnight launches and it was the first book they read on their own and it's the book that made them. I just didn't have that and so I, I felt like I had to play catch up a lot with like the midnight launches this time and everybody reading it at the same time and no spoilers because for me I don't know how much of it was spoiled in this book for the original series and I think that's quite nice because I just had no clue. I'm sure that there were characters popping up in the Book of Dust but I don't feel like that has affected my reading of the original trilogy which I am going to read at some point now that I've read the Book of Dust. I'd quite like to read it before the next instalment in the Book of Dust trilogy comes out. I don't know when that'll be. I don't think there's an official release date yet, but I think that I'm gonna read the original trilogy and then I'll just be able to complete the whole story. But yes, I definitely did miss out on the history of reading behind it. There's years and years that people have been waiting for this book, but I think that I'm gonna look at that in a positive light. Like, I didn't need to wait for this book. I just read it. I had no expectations going into it, which is really good, so I couldn't be disappointed. And that was a really nice perspective to have. I definitely wouldn't be concerned if 
you are sitting watching this and thinking I want to read the book of dust but I really am going to miss out on a lot of the context because it's very easy to pick up on and I found a really handy thing to do was to look at the wiki site for the original trilogy and then for this trilogy which explains a lot of the magical side of it like the demons and you have to be very picky and very choosy at what you read because there could be spoilers and I'm sure I might have glazed over a few but I've forgotten them now so you do have to be careful because you might spoil some things that happen later on in the original books but I thought that was a really great thing to do to find out about what demons were because at first I was like are they just animals or are they people are they separate but as you go on through the book anyway that becomes clearer and clearer as it goes on. I was really surprised at how dark the book of dust was. I had to put it down for a few days because I was like this is creepy and apocalyptic and a bit uncomfortable but in a good way but I think it's a really amazing show of writing that an author can make me feel that way. The main character in La Belle Sauvage is called Malcolm Polstead and he is so so cute and sweet and I loved Philip Pullman's writing of him and his characterization because you really get this sense that he's curious and clueless at the same time. So even in the way that Philip Pullman writes his speech and his dialogue, it was really, really well done. And I loved that about it. I felt like I really got a sense of who Malcolm was and what he wanted and where he was going to go. It's really hard to sum up what La Belle Sauvage is actually about because there are so many complex layers to it. Is it just about Malcolm? Is it about this baby called Lyra who has an attachment to and who we then meet in Northern Lights? Or is it just a way or telling what happened before Northern Lights. I don't think so for that last one. I think that it is a story in its own right and that was really nice to read. I actually am so glad that I read La Belle Sauvage first. Some people might say, oh my gosh, why did you read it first? But I felt like it was a really nice way of starting my reading of the books. Having not had that already existing history, I got to witness people going to the launch events at midnight this time round. I got to hear them talking about it, these books that they loved, and I got to experience some of that magic for myself. I just want to be in that universe now. I mean, not completely, because there's some horrible things going on, but I love the idea of having that demon, that manifestation of your soul that you can just be with forever. I love that. I would highly recommend reading La Belle Sauvage if you either haven't read the original trilogy or have and just haven't read this one yet. I feel like everyone who's already read the trilogy has read this one now but there's still probably some of you who haven't. Do not be scared. Please do not be scared if you haven't read the original trilogy. I hadn't and it's just made me even more excited to read the original trilogy than I was before. So either way you're going to love this book and fall in love with this incredibly intricate world that Philip Pullman has created. Created. So thank you so much to Penguin for sponsoring this video. I'll leave all the links in the description to where you can buy and check out the book of dust because you're going to want to I am sure. It is such a gorgeous book inside and out. It looks like this and <gasps> under the dust jacket it looks like this. It's the most beautiful book ever. I love it. Probably gonna be a feature in one of my most beautiful books in the world videos in the future. So do go out and buy it, borrow it from the library, go and read it. I would highly recommend it. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!